All right, everyone, we are in the home stretch in this video as we walk through problems 31 through 50 of our geometry review. Let's go ahead and get started. Number 31, classify the triangle as acute, right, or obtuse, and as an equilateral, isosceles, or scalene. Uh, well, in this one, obviously, all of the angles are going to be acute angles, so that eliminates A and C as possible answers. Now, it looks like only two side lengths are marked equal, so 31 must be um, D, acute, and isosceles. 31 is D. Number 32, uh, very clearly a right angle has been chosen, so that eliminates basically everything but B. Who cares what the side lengths are? Um, it's clearly a right triangle, so 32 is B. Number 31, um, there is one very obvious obtuse angle here, so that eliminates B and D as possibilities. So we're looking, are all the side length this links the same? Well, clearly not, so it's definitely not equilateral. That makes 33A obtuse and scalene. All right, number 34, find the measure of the indicated exterior angle. Well, we have this property that says an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles. So in this case, the measure of angle Z is equal to the sum of measures X and Y. So in this case, uh, 171 minus N, which is how angle Z is defined, is equal to the sum of X, which is 6N minus 17, and 4N plus 12. We combine like terms on the right-hand side. That gives us 10N uh, minus 5. We add 5 to both sides, and subtract or add an n to both sides, we end up with n equal to 16. But that does not solve our problem. We need to find the measure of the exterior angle, the measure of angle z, which is going to be 171 minus n, which n we found was 16. So the measure of angle z is going to be 155 degrees. So 34 is b. 34 is B. Okay, now problems uh, 35 and 36 are to help you practice uh, two of those geometric constructions. So we are going to skip those in this video and skip straight to number 37, which is a proof about the congruence of two triangles. So let's see if we can do this one. We are given that angle AST and angle RTS are the same. So this angle right here, AST and RTS, those are going to be the same measure. And AS, this side, and RT, this side, are the same length. So that side and that side are the same. Our task is to show that triangle SAT and TRS are the same. So we want to show that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. We want to show that they are the same. And looking at what we have marked right now, I've got a side congruent and I've got an angle congruent between the two. They share side TS, so it's really setting me up nicely to be a side angle side congruence. So let's go ahead and write the statements and the reasons. So statement on one side of the two columns, whoa, and uh, the reason on the other side. So obviously we have to start with the given information. So angle AST is equal to angle RTS, and that was given, and AS is equal to RT, and that was given, and we know uh, reflexively that TS and ST are in fact the same line, so they are equal by the reflexive property. Something is equal to itself. Um, and this sets us up nicely to say that triangle SAT is congruent to triangle TRS um, by the side angle side property of congruence. Okay, and we have shown uh, what we were set out um, to prove. Now, 38 is a little bit more involved. Um, essentially, what we want to do with this problem is we want to show that two triangles are congruent and use the facts of their congruency to show that 
two other triangles are congruent. So um, let's just kind of mark up our, our figure here so we know exactly what's going on. We are given that AB and CD are the same length. So we see this marking here and this marking here. So this, whoopsies, this, um, this line and this line are the same length. We are also given that BE and FC are the same. So BE is right here, FC is right here. So that means that this line and this line are the same length. And we're also given that angle B and angle C are the same. Angle B and angle C are the same. Okay, well, just marking what we have right now, we have a side congruent to another side. We have the included angle included angle congruent, we have the other side uh, congruent. So right away we can already see that this triangle uh, in blue, triangle ABE, and this triangle, triangle FCD, those triangles are going to be congruent by the side angle side property. Now that's not what we were supposed to show because the given information is enough for us to say other stuff in the proof. Uh, we were actually asked to show that triangle AEF and triangle DFE are the same. So what we want to prove is that this triangle is congruent to this triangle, so that the green and the pink triangles are congruent. Um, we're going to use the fact that uh, the blue triangles are congruent to show that the green and the pink triangles are congruent. Um, so let's let's start our two column proof here. So we've got statements and their reason for being true. So we'll start with the given information. AB is equal to CD. That was given. Uh, BE is equal to FC. That's given. Uh, angle B is congruent to angle C, meaning the measure of angle B is equal to the measure of angle C, and that is given. And that is enough to say that triangle ABE, triangle ABE is congruent to triangle DCF by the side angle side property. Now we're not done because those are not the two triangles we were supposed to show were congruent, but the fact that they are congruent helps us to show that AEF and DFE are congruent triangles as well. So um, knowing that these two triangles in blue are in fact congruent triangles, we can say the following. Um, we can say that angle um, AEB, angle AEB, this angle right here is going to be congruent to angle DFC right here because they are corresponding angles in triangles that are already congruent. Tri or, uh, angle AEB is going to be equal to angle DFC because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal. Okay, now what else do we have? We have um, AE and DF being the same length. AE and DF are going to be the same length. Uh, this, this side AE and DF are going to be the same length because the blue triangles are congruent. And again, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, are equal. So we've got uh, AE equal to DF. And I'm just going to put ditto marks for that reason. I'm not, I'm not going to rewrite corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal. It's for the same reason. Okay, uh, now is kind of the, uh, the, the tricky part here. Um, I'm working towards another side angle side property. Uh, reflexively, we can say that EF is equal to EF, right? This side that I'm bolding here in black is going to be equal to itself. So we're going to write EF equals EF uh, by the reflexive property. So I'm, I'm kind of almost there, right? I've got two sides of the green and the pink triangles matching up. AE and FD are matching. EF matches itself. Um, so really what I need to show is that the included angle between those two sides is congruent to the included angle of the other triangle. So what I need to show now is that this angle I'm marking in navy blue is equal to 
this angle here in the pink triangle. So how do I do that? Well, I kind of go back up to my given information here or stuff that I've, I've come up with because of the corresponding parts. I have already said that angle AEB and DFC are the same, the ones that I have marked in yellow, AEB and DFC. Those are the same angle measure. Now, notice that both of, both of the ones that are in navy are supplements to congruent angles, right? Together, I'll mark it in another color. Uh, together, this is creating a straight angle. This is creating a straight angle. Well, if I already have this angle and this angle the same, and both of them are creating 180 degrees, that means that this angle and this angle must be the same. So here's how I'm going to write that. I'm going to say that angle AEF is equal to angle EFD because supplements of congruent angles are equal. And that should make sense. So, you know, for example, if AEB, if this angle right here is, I don't know, 80 degrees, that means that its congruent angle over here, DFC, this one's also going to be 80 degrees. Well, to make the straight angle here in purple, that means that the navy angle must be 100 degrees. And to make a straight angle over here, again, in purple, again, the navy angle must be 100 degrees. So those two things are going to match. So supplements of congruent angles are equal. They have to be, both be the same measure. Otherwise, they're not going to sum together to be 180 degrees. Okay, well, between these three statements, I have enough to say that triangle AEF and triangle DFE are congruent by the side angle side property. Triangle AEF is congruent to triangle DFE by the side angle side property for congruent triangles. That was a tough one, but definitely well worth it. Okay, um, back to our multiple choice here with questions about similar triangles, not congruent triangles, but similar triangles. Number 39, the two triangles below are similar. Find the unknown side lengths. Well, similar triangles are supposed to have proportional sides. So if I look at the hypotenuses of both of these triangles, I've got 10 and 5. If I look at the longest legs of both of these triangles, I've got eight and four. Well, it's looking like the triangle on the left is double in length, the triangle on the right. So that means if the triangle on the right, the shorter leg, um, has a length of three, that means X must be six. So 39 should be C. Number 40, Hiran, who is 1.98 meters tall, wishes to find the height of a tree, wishes to find the height of a tree. She walks 23.9 meters from the base of the tree. She walks uh, 23.98 meters from the base of the tree along the shadow until her head is in a position where the tip of her shadow, the tip of her shadow, exactly overlaps the end of the treetop's shadow. Okay, so that point that I've marked right here, that is the top of her shadow, and it is also the top of the tree's shadow. She is now 7.38 meters from the end of the shadows, so that means that this distance from that point to where she is standing is 7.38 meters from there to there. How tall is the tree? Round to the nearest hundredth. Okay, well, in disguise, these are again two similar triangles. How do I know that they're similar? Well, I've got two essentially right triangles to figure out. The smaller triangle is really her and uh, her shadow. So that's going to be this side is 7.38. This side is um, her height, 1.98. And then I've got this bigger triangle, 
which is the tree, and I want to find that height, and this length here, which is the sum of 7.38 and 23.98. Well, that total length, which is the shadow um, of the tree, the length of the shadow of the tree is 31.36. And since again, these are both right triangles, all right triangles are similar, um, we must have proportionality between the side lengths. So in other words, 1.98 is to 7.38 as the height of the tree, we'll call that X, as the height of the tree is to its side length, 31.36. And we can obviously use cross products to solve this proportion and we'll end up with X being um, 8.41 round into the nearest hundredth, so that is D. All right, number 41. A ladder is resting against a wall. The top of the ladder touches the wall at a height of six feet. Okay, so we've got this, we've got this ladder that is uh, leaning against a wall. Obviously the wall should be uh, straight up and down here. Let's uh, get rid of some of this stuff here. The wall should be should be perpendicular to the floor, right? So we've got a right triangle going on here. A ladder is resting against a wall. The top of the ladder, the top of the ladder, touches the wall at a height of six feet. Find the length of the ladder. Here's my ladder. Find the length of the ladder if the length is two feet more than its distance from the wall. Well, I don't know what its distance from the wall is, so I'm going to call that X, but I know the length of the ladder is going to be two feet more than that. So essentially what this is asking me to do is to solve a right triangle. That means that I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So X squared plus six squared, the sum of the squares of the sides or the legs is going to be equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is two plus X squared. So X squared equals, oh, whoops, x squared uh, plus 36 equals, um, now this is not 4 plus x squared. You do not distribute the exponent through a sum. 2, 2 plus x squared means 2 plus x times 2 plus x. We've got a FOIL. First, outside, inside, last. We're going to end up with 4 plus 4x plus x squared, right? The outside and the inside terms are both 2x. They're going to come together and be 4x. So solving for x, I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. Those are going to totally cancel. And uh, subtract the 4 over, that's 32 is 4x. Divide both sides by 4. We get 8 equals x. Now that's not my answer. I want to find the length of the ladder. The ladder is two more feet um, than the length of the distance from the wall. So my answer here is really 8 plus 2, which is 10. 41 is a. Okay, uh, 42, a square with sides of length 92. Square, a square. Okay, so that means that this guy right here in, in pink and this and this and this are all 92. Let's mark that. 92, 92, 92. So a square with sides of length 92 is inscribed in, in a circle and circumscribed about another circle. What is the area between the circles? Okay, so what I'm supposed to be finding is the area of this tube shape in here that I have colored in green. I'm supposed to find that area. Okay, well the most obvious way to do that is to find the area of the larger circle and subtract out the area of the smaller circle. Okay, so um, we'll say area of tube is going to be the area of the larger uh, circle 
minus the area of the smaller. Okay, well let's figure out first the area of the larger circle. To find the area of a circle, I need to do um, pi r squared. Um, now, I'm going to call this... I'm going to call this r sub l, the radius of the larger circle squared, minus, again, another area, pi r squared, but this is going to be the radius of the smaller circle. Maybe I'll use a script s, radius of the smaller circle squared. Okay, now how do I find, how do I find the radius of the larger circle? Well, here's a really handy trick here. If I cut that square right down the middle, then not only would that pink line, or you know, this fuchsia color, not only would that line be the diameter of the circle, but notice that it's also the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So in order to find uh, this, this entire length, this diameter, I'm really finding the hypotenuse of the Pythagorean theorem. So in other words, if I solve 92 squared plus 92 squared equals the diameter squared, and the diameter is really twice the radius, so we could even write this as 92 squared plus 92 squared equals uh, 2r squared. If I solve that for r, then that means I have the radius of the larger circle. Um, and that ends up, that ends up being uh, the square root of 4,232 is the radius of the larger circle. So I'm going to go ahead and write that over here. The square root of 4,232, that's the radius of the larger circle. Now, I also need to find the radius of the smaller circle, which is just going to be half of 92, right? Look at this. If I, if I copy over, I'll use, uh, I'll use light blue. If I copy this side length right here, if I copy this side length right here, right in the middle of this circle, that's going to be the same length of 92. Half of that is going to be the radius of the small circle. So half of 92 is going to be 46. So minus pi times 46 squared. So uh, we'll end up getting we'll end up getting uh, 4,232 pi, right? The square root squared is just the the radicand. Uh, minus 46 squared is 2,116 times pi. And we subtract those two numbers, we actually get 2,116 pi. So that is b. 42 is b. All right. Number 43, find the area of the figure. Okay, well, this is a compilation of a couple different things. Right, we've got um, we've got this triangle to find the area of, and we have a rectangle to find the area of, and then we have a semicircle to find the area of, and then the sum of all three of those little parts is going to be the area of the entire figure. So. Um, area of the triangle is one half base times height. The area of the rectangle is length times width. And the area of the semicircle is going to be one half pi r squared. So what do we know? We know that a is equal to 12. So this is 12, which means that this side right here is also going to be 12. And we know that B is 8. This is 8. So that means that this diameter here is going to be 8, half of which is going to be the radius, which is 4. And then we know that C is 18. The entire length from the, the tip here 
to the start of the semicircle is 18. The pink length is 12, so that means right in here, the base of the triangle must be 6. So the area of the entire figure is going to be the area of the triangle plus the area of the square plus the area of the semicircle. Okay, so area of the triangle, 1 half the base is 6 times the height of 8, 1 half times 6 times 8. The area of the rectangle will be 12 times 8, length times width. And then the area of the semicircle is going to be 1 half pi, and the radius is 4 squared. So we've got uh, 24 plus 96 plus 8 pi. We are going to use 3.14 for our approximation of pi. So that means 24 plus 96 plus 8 times 3.14 is going to be about 145.12. And area is in square units, so we'll say yards squared. That makes 43c. Okay, number 44. Given the circle with center O and rectangle ABCO, find the diameter of the circle. We are told that AC is 11 and CD is 6. We want to find the diameter of the circle. Oh, well, this is kind of an optical illusion here. Um, since since uh, ABCO is a rectangle, that means that you know this side length, this side length are the same, this side length and this side length are the same, and we've got right triangles right here. Um, diagonals of a rectangle are going to be the same. So in other words, uh, instead of drawing this segment, if we had instead drawn that segment, they would both be 11 centimeters in length. Well, this diagonal across the rectangle is also the radius of the circle. So if the radius is 11, that means that the diameter is going to be twice that length. So it will be 22. So 44 is A. Not as difficult as it first appears. Number 45, find the area of quadrilateral A, B, C, D if angles B and D are right angles. Well, any quadrilateral is going to be two triangles put together. So if we connect vertices um, A and C, we can see two right triangles here. Um, so we have enough to solve this triangle. Um, by the Pythagorean theorem, we need to get the hypotenuse so that we can solve for um, this side. So maybe we want to call the hypotenuse of both of these triangles x and the leg b, c, let's call that y. Um, if I can find the hypotenuse, I can solve for the other leg, and then that will give me enough to do 1 half base times height for triangles 1 and 2. So first, the Pythagorean theorem, uh, 10 squared plus 24 squared is going to give me x squared. And if I solve for x, um, you end up getting 26. And then we use the fact that x is 26 and solve for the missing leg of triangle number 2. So 2 squared plus y squared is supposed to be 26 squared. And that means that y is the square root of 672. And now that's enough to do 1 half base times height for both triangle 1 and triangle 2. So area of uh, triangle number 1 plus the area of triangle number 2 will give me the area of the entire figure. So 1 half the base is 10, the height is 24 for triangle 1, 1 half 
the base is y, the square root of 672, and the height is 2. So that gives me 5 times 24, which is 120. And 1 half of 2 is 1, plus the square root of 672. Well, that's the same thing as 120 plus 4 square roots of 42, once I factor 622. So that is C. 45 is C. 46, find the volume of the circular cylinder below. Well, our uh, volume formula for a right circular cylinder is pi r squared h. So in this case, uh, we're approximating pi with 3.14. Our radius is given to us as 3. We're going to square that value and then multiply it by the height of 16. So we get something like 452.16, and this is in cubic yards. So our answer there is D. All right, 47, a hemisphere, which is literally half the volume of a sphere. So half the volume of a sphere would be one half times four thirds pi r cubed. Well, in this case, we're given that the radius is two. So we'll sub in that value, one half of four thirds. The two will cancel the four. So four divided by two is two. We'll have two thirds times 3.14 for pi, and then 2 cubed is going to be 8, and that product comes out to be about 16.747 cubic feet rounding to the nearest thousandth. So our answer here is going to be C. 47 is C. All right, rounding the bend, just a few more um, problems here. Number 48, we are given things about a sphere, such as its volume, and we want to figure out its surface area. Well, the uh, formula for surface area is 4 pi r squared, so I really need to figure out the radius. Uh, well, I can do that from just knowing the volume, right? The volume formula for a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So if I'm given that the volume is uh, 1372 over 3 pi, that value is supposed to be equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the only variable I have to solve for is r. That's the only unknown. That's the radius. Um, so divide both sides by pi. That will cancel out that. Um, multiply both sides by 4 thirds, or I'm sorry, three fourths. We want to multiply by the reciprocal. That will cancel those threes, cancel the fours. Uh, 1372 divided by four is um, 343. And that is equal to R cubed. So I take the cube root of both sides and seven cubed is 343, so r must be 7. So that is enough to plug in over here and figure out my surface area. 4 times uh, pi times 7 squared, well that's going to be 4 times 49, or uh, 196 pi feet squared. So that's going to be c. 48 is c. Okay. Uh, 49 and 50 are about those special sequences. Uh, 49 is the Fibonacci sequence. So we're given the 28th Fibonacci number, the 28th Fibonacci number, and we are also given the 30th Fibonacci number, and our task is to find the 29th Fibonacci number. Well, the Fibonacci sequence, sequence is recursive, so that means that uh, the 28th Fibonacci number plus the 29th Fibonacci number is supposed to be the 30th Fibonacci number. Well, this one is 317,811, and the 30th Fibonacci number is 832,040. So if I solve for F sub 29, that means I'm just going to subtract the 317,811 number 
over to the right hand side and that will give me 514,229. So the answer there is D. Okay, last problem. What is the 20th term of the Lucas sequence? Well, the seeds of the Lucas sequence are 1 and 3. And then you just add recursively. So 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 plus 4 is 11. You do this until you get out to the 20th term. You don't need to see me add all those successive values. Uh, the answer is D, 15,127. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our review. Um, I hope it was helpful. Obviously, go back and review any problems that you need to see again.